In this video, I'm going to give an overview of the purchase order processing process in Dynamics 365 Business Central. The first thing I'll do is create a new purchase order. So I'm going to go over to purchasing. And I'm going to go over to the purchase order section here. And then I'll just click new. This will open up the window to create a new purchase order. So I'll just go in here and select my vendor. Um, if I didn't know the actual vendor ID or I didn't want to do a lookup, I could actually just start to type in the name if I know that I'm looking up for a wide world of importers in that example. And then it'll autofill a lot of the header information for me. And I have the option to then continue and fill in some of that information or change it as needed. But I'll leave the date as today's default date in the system, which is April 9th, 2018. And then I'll just put an invoice number. This is optional. This can be turned off if you do not want to enter the invoice number until a later stage on the purchase order process. So I'm going to continue down here until I get to the line items. And I'm going to add an item to this purchase order now. So I'm going to pick this test item here. And I'm going to order a quantity of 10. Now what I've done is I have set up an example of a workflow and approval process. So just to demonstrate how that's set up, if I go to the workflow window here, I have this one turned on, this purchase order approval workflow. And if I open this up, we can see that it's currently enabled. And I actually have a restriction that I added in here. Um, where it requires an approval for any purchase order that has an amount greater than a thousand dollars. So I'll just go back to this purchase order so we can see how that works. So in this case, um, what I can do is the first time maybe I'll uh, decrease this quantity just to show you both uh, examples here. So right now I have a quantity of seven, so my purchase order is only $840. So if I wanted to continue and print and post this purchase order, I would be able to. I could go to my posting window, and if I started to post and print it, it would bring me to the prompt for the next window here. Now if I change this quantity, and um, we'll bring it back to 10, so now our total purchase order is at $1,200. Now, if I go to this window and I choose post and print, it's going to stop me and just tell me that it must be approved and released before I can continue with this purchase order. Now, I'm also going to add a dimension just as an example here, just to demonstrate how this can be broken out by departments or cost codes or however you have your dimensions set up. In this case, we have a department set up as a dimension. So I can go here and I can assign these department codes to the different line items on here. So I can uh, assign this to the sales department code if I wanted to. Now with the purchase order process, once we have this PO approved, we can um, continue and we can just receive the purchase order or we could receive it and invoice it all in one step. But I think in this case, what we'll do is we'll just receive a portion of it so that you can see um, what that looks like. So we have a quantity of 10 on this purchase order, but we're only going to receive six. So I'm going to update this box here to receive six. And I'll leave the rest as is because I'm not planning on invoicing it yet anyway. So now I have everything uh, the way I need it. So I need to request approval since it's above $1,000. So I'm going to make that request here. And you'll notice when I do this, the status is changed to released. And that's because I'm actually set up in the system as an approver, so I don't need another user to approve uh, this purchase order for me. Uh, if I was not set up as an approver, then the other user would have to um, actually approve that purchase order, and they would see that on their home page and in a couple other spots, but they would see it under this approvals. They would see request to approve, and they'd have to click here and then approve that purchase order. But in our case, I'm set up as an approval Prover, so I can continue with that. So I'm going to go back to our purchase order here. And since it's been released, I can now receive it or invoice it or do both all at once. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to receive it. So I'm going to go to posting, post and print. 
And I'm just going to choose receive. It has now received the quantity on here. So you'll notice that it shows on here. We get the six, and now there's four remaining to receive, and there's still 10 left to invoice. And then it just opened up this purchase receipt um, document that we could look at. Um, if we want to see what that looks like, this is just a purchase receipt. So it just shows you everything that was received on here and what was ordered and then what's remaining. So now we can continue and we can receive the remaining quantity. Uh, another option we have is if I close out of this window here, if I'm in my main purchase orders list, I don't even have to open up the purchase order. I could just find the one that I'm looking for and I can go up here to posting and I can go to post and print or just post if I just want to do the receipt this time. And I can receive uh, the remaining quantities on here. So it, it'll know to receive uh, what's left on that line. So now if I go back here and I look at my purchase order, it'll show that out of the 10 quantity, 10 has now been received. So there's nothing left to receive, but we still have the 10 that need to be invoiced. So we could follow the same process here. If we want to invoice it, we would just go to posting and maybe we want to print this time. So we'll include post and print. And we can leave it as receive an invoice or just change it to invoice. Uh, either way, the system knows that there's nothing left to receive. So it's just going to create the invoice. So I'll open up that invoice here. So now I've just created a similar document, this purchase invoice. I'm just previewing it here in PDF. And you'll notice that on the invoice, it's showing the full 10 since we received it in two shipments, but now we've invoiced the entire amount. It's showing the full quantity on the PO it has been invoiced to $1,200. The other thing we could do then is we can look and see since at that point, it's actually posted that invoice. So if we wanted to look at the vendor as an example, we could go back here and pull up Wide World Importers on our vendor list. So here's Wide World Importers. And then it'll give us some uh, statistical information on here. And what I could do is I could click this balance link if I wanted to see what was just posted. And we'll see here's the invoice that we just posted right now. It has the purchase order number on here, 106009. And then it also shows the amount. So there's the $1,200 and it shows that it's remaining, but it's not due quite yet. So that's the full process. There's uh, a lot of options as far as um, what's what you'd like to define as part of your workflow. You can have it enabled, you can have it disabled. You can also have the workflow set up on the purchase invoice step. So you could customize it, you know, to whatever your business needs are. And then you can also customize the process that you want to use as far as if you want to receive an invoice all at once or you just want to uh, break that up into separate steps.